um, this is our second annual Celebrating Her series, where um, basically we take women from all different genres, aspects mm -hmm. in the entertainment industry, and we just want to uplift them and share their story with the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to ask you a couple questions about your journey and how you started. Um, I know that you started out singing when you were younger. Um, so how did that passion come about? Where did that come from? Ooh, you know, I always like when I discuss my craft and what I get into, I always say whatever I'm doing at the time has chosen me. I haven't chosen it, you know, like so when it was music, that was just what made me happiest at the time. It was uh, I loved expressing myself in a different way and getting creative with writing. And at that point in my life, it was feeding my spirit. But I always say, like, I felt like comedy was knocking on the door. And I'm like, I'm not trying to hear it. I don't want to hear it. And yeah. eventually, you know, that's when I kind of transitioned more into, into acting and welcoming that world. But, um, but yeah, when I was younger, I think it was a really great release. It was almost like therapy when I, when I was singing, you know, it was like you're, a teenager and you have so many feelings and so many thoughts and so many relationships and I poured it into that but now with acting I'm able to to transition and, and pour it into that. I love that and yeah. how did that inspiration of you um, getting into acting start? Was it your dad or was it someone else that you kind of looked into the entertainment industry and was like oh I want to be just like her I want to be on the big mm -hmm. screen like her? Yeah, I well, I always grew up around it. You know, I would visit sets or be sitting at auditions. If it was like, my dad's like, okay, I'm going to take you guys to an audition and it'll only be like three hours. We're sitting there for 11, like, ah! <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I always grew up around it. But I think I, I really fell in love with acting when I started watching Saturday Night Live and Chappelle's show. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Maya Rudolph. I remember just watching her be so versatile and go from Beyonce to Donatella Versace to all these characters. And uh, I fell in love with transforming. So it was, it was less acting at that point and just more a fascination of being able to be a different person and, and how well you can nail it. And so I knew at that point, I was like, I love how much people are, are being able to shift how they appear and shift how they move. I want to do something like that. And so I, you know, eventually finally answered the call that I heard of knocking at my door that you should be an actor. And uh, yeah, and it, it all just kind of took off from there. And it, it was amazing because nothing was in vain earlier in my career. I learned so much doing music and, uh, and hosting. I was doing red carpet hosting and stuff like that. But I think when I finally started doing comedy, I was like, this is, this feels right. This is where I'm supposed to be. So let me ask you a question. Do you um, kind of yeah. point yourself as a comedian now? Because I know you started with the Beyonce skits and yeah. stuff like that on Vine and YouTube. Um, so in this point in your career, do you think of yourself as a comedian? I, you know, I think it's so distracting when people walk into a room with too many titles because you can't respect somebody who says that they're an acrobat and a dentist and an actor, right? You're like, okay, well, what do you thrive in? And so <laughs> I'm like, let's pick one. But um, so I personally introduce myself as an actress and comedian and I'll have certain people go, girl, you better stop. I know you can sing. And I go, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll let you say it, not me. So right. I just, you know, I, I feel like with me being on a show right now on a Black Lady Sketch show, that's, that's my job. That's my, my work right now. And so I, I introduce myself as an actress comedian, but it is really dope when people have more background info and, and that's when I'm able to claim those gifts. But you never want to be distracting as an artist. You know, you never want to say something and people go, yeah, but what are you, what, what is your passion right now? You, right. you know, you want to be clear about that. Yeah. And congratulations on being on the Black Lady Sketch Show. That's amazing. Thank you. Um, Thank you. A show that's revolving around Black women and Issa Rae being one of the executive producers on there. Um, how does it feel at this point in your career being surrounded by so many heavy hitters in one, um, in one spot, you know, kind of shining through that? Yeah, it's, it's been amazing. It's like a real life masterclass. You know, I, I humbled myself when I walked into this process, knowing that I don't have real, real professional training. I didn't go to acting school. For me, it was just studying what I loved, observing what was around me and, and going with it. So I understood that I was around a lot of people who have truly studied and a lot of people who have put in their 10,000, 20,000 hours. Uh, but 
I, my biggest thing was just delivering. I was like, I'm so grateful for this opportunity that I don't want to waste your time and I don't want to disappoint my family. My dad's like, you better do your thing. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it just, for me, it was, it was a lot of pressure to deliver correctly and show them that I was respecting the opportunity. And, you know, I'm the baby of the cast. So I knew it'd be a little bit of, oh, the little sister treatment, but I've learned so much from these women and, you know, by them having so many celebrity guests in and out of our season, you get to work with people that you grew up idolizing. So it's been really beautiful to just be on a platform like HBO as a Black woman doing comedy however I want to do it is just incredible. Yes, I love that. And even throughout that, I feel like you are inspiring, inspiring young women. Um, how does that feel to you by being able to kind of look around and seeing all these young women aspiring to do what you do. And I know your journey wasn't easy. And um, I know your father was a big heavy pusher in your career. Um, But for these women out here that probably don't have anyone to kind of push them into that level, what like um, advice can you give them to get to that point of, you know, being where you are now? That's a great question. Uh, I I love that question. I love, you know, it's very interesting because our generation has access to the entire world through these, right? And so we we have to, there's there has to be a balance between getting lazy with our craft because we don't have to thug it out the way that our OGs did. But then there also has to be a way where we utilize all of our resources. And anytime I speak to an actor, they say, well, your dad was in the industry and that's how, and I stopped them right there and I go, no, I started on YouTube and then I auditioned unsuccessfully for 10 years. <laughs> and then when I was finally in a position of being hungry, humble enough, uh, well-rounded enough, that's when my opportunity came. I auditioned like a regular actor sending in a self tape and then got a call back, you know? So I always tell people, you have the world at your hands. You have a reading buddy when you need to do lines voice note. You have uh, a director, a videographer, you have a cameraman, you have a headshot taker. There's just no excuses, you know? And I think it's deep that we can get lazy in our generation when we have no excuses. But a lot of people who came before us were willing to do anything to accomplish their dreams. And so my biggest thing is utilize your resources and catch yourself when you're being lazy. And that's something hard to do because sometimes we have no idea we're even being lazy. Right. You know, and we we think we're working at our hardest, but it's like people always tell me, I want to be an actor. Do you have a headshot? No. Have you been to an acting class? No. Have you tried to write a bio for yourself, even if it's a no? Have you Googled how to start being an actor? No. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I, I don't know if people want a magical solution to fall from the sky, but there's hustle in it. So I, I always say Google is your best friend. There's almost nothing you can't Google. Right. And, and take advantage of the fact that we have the whole world at our fingertips when social media didn't exist before. So um, yeah, my advice is is get creative, learn how to be your own team, whether it's me knowing how to do makeup or set up a lighting or braid my own hair, you have to know how to be your own team because this business is expensive and unreliable. And a lot of people will say they'll be there for you and let you down or overcharge you and let you down. So yeah, my biggest advice is take advantage of resources. Um, Don't get lazy and be your own team, because if you can do 10 things on your team, you can't really get, you know, screwed. You always have your own back. Yeah, I agree. I feel like social media is a powerful tool, like the most powerful tool right now. As much as you post content and you just Mm -hmm. be yourself and get out there and do what you want to do. I don't think anyone can say no to you because you are are, you're coming to the table. You're bringing what you have to the table. The yep. worst someone can say is no, you can always just try again somewhere else. So yeah, sharing that story because a lot of young women nowadays think that they have to go different routes to become successful instead of, you know, chasing their dreams because they think it's too mm-hmm. far to catch. Um, so your story, you know, being able to go from YouTube to singing to acting mm-hmm. and then now being on one of the funniest shows on HBO right now is mm-hmm. amazing. So thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah kind of going into um, more of the Black women's struggles as uh, being in the entertainment industry, um, what's one thing that um, was really hard for you as a Black woman to kind of overcome into the entertainment industry? 
Man, I think we naturally have so many hurdles that are just beyond counting. Um, as a comedian, for me, I think my struggle has been trying to convince people that I'm allowed to be as witty and as sharp and as articulate as the white male actors are allowed to be. I think a lot of the time they have an idea of what a funny black woman looks like, which nine times out of 10 is a stereotype of, okay, well roll your neck more and look more mad. You know, and it's like, it's a bunch of white people telling me how to deliver humor. And so I grew up studying greats, whether it be an Eddie Murphy or a Maya Rudolph or a Richard Pryor or a Jim Carrey or a Robin Williams or a Jerry Lewis. I looked at all types of comedians and so I pulled from the wit that they had, but I realized they don't really like us being in that space. They want us to kind of just do this and be the punchline yeah. and the best friend and the, oh, hell no. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I, I want to do character work. When I, I remember the first time I saw Austin Powers and I said, wait, he doesn't look like this. This man is in character. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, that's where I want to be. And so I couldn't be on a better platform to do it. I'm so grateful for that. And to be surrounded by Black women um, is, is an experience that is very rare. But it's always been a struggle where people go, gosh, she was really funny. But I just envisioned the character a little different. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Yeah. Right. But what are they going to say? Oh, be sassier. And uh, can you put your hip into it? They don't know what to do. And so I've just kind of stuck to my guns. And I've I've been in the face of a lot of roles where I really wanted it, but I knew that they wanted me to play something that I was uncomfortable with. And there's power in no, because eventually I got to the right yes, where I get to call the shots on my characters and be as quirky and strange and weird and smart humored as I want to be. I don't have to shrink. And ironically, Black women are allowing me to do that. You know, it's like, they're like, all right, they're not letting you do it. Okay, you be as weird as you want, girl. You're safe here. <laughs> I love that Black women are kind of getting out of their shell and being who they want to be in acting. Um, and I think the um, that show on HBO really highways that into a different level of, we can be funny, we can be quirky, we can be weird. And it's yeah. okay to do that. It's just another versatility of all the aspects that we hold inside of us. Um, so what is next for Sky Townsend? What are we seeing in 2022? 2022, wow. Um, there's a lot cooking right now that I'm not used to, you know, I used to laugh at people who were like, I can't discuss it yet. And now legally I'm like, oh. Okay. Right, right. <laughs> I will say, <laughs> I used to be like, okay, girl. And now I have a lawyer in my email, like, you better keep your big mouth shut, girl. So I know better now. <laughs> However, um, you know, I can say we ended season two with an Emmy win and five new nominations. We were greenlit for season three. That's all I could say. And, uh, and yeah, I'm trying to transition into developing my own projects. And also to film. I'm looking to, to dabble into film. That is, that is big for me. But uh, yeah, but I'm still staying in the comedy lane. You know, everyone's like, oh, what are you dropping music? I'm like, never. I'm, like, <laughs> I just, I, I'm focused on legacy right now. That's all I can say is, you know, for me, like I said, I'm a very anti-celebrity kid, even though I am one. But I believe in in the power of hard work. And I believe in making the people who came before you proud. And so for me, you know, I look at my dad and the way that he paved a way when there was no way. And, um, you know, I, I'm honored to come after that, but I'm inspired to now continue the legacy where I always say, if people see that I'm a Townsend, I don't want them to go, that's how she got the job. I want them right. to be like, that makes so much <laughs> sense. You know, that's what I want is, is mean, for people to do the math. As a little girl, I was on YouTube searching your name <laughs> and just watching. I was obsessed with Vine. Um, oh my gosh. YouTube. I was up until 3 a.m. just like searching videos. And yeah. honestly, just looking at someone like you to where you are now is honestly so inspiring. And you've come a long way. And I know your dad is so proud of you. Like, he's so proud. My mom would be so proud of me right now, too. It's just that parent love. And it's so amazing to see. Um, so, lastly, what makes you rare? We are Rare Radar and we are, you know, the company that loves to highlight different and versatility and everything like that. So what makes you rare within yourself, within the world, whatever? Oh, 
That's a wonderful <laughs> question. That's no, that's that's a that's an incredible question because it forces people to do this, and and we can be uncomfortable with that. What makes me rare? Wow. Um, I think what makes me rare is my ability to infuse joy into everything that I do. Um, I think what makes me rare is my comedy is my superpower and, and not even on the screen. I think what people don't realize is my best work is when I'm not working. It's when my friend is really sad and calls me and I can hear their spirits broken and I know I could crack a laugh out of it. Or, you know, when I got my heart broken and then my sister got her heart broken, but I found a way to be like, we go laugh through this. I, I, I always say, you know, comedians, are so powerful because they they give their whole life to spreading joy. And so I think what makes me rare is is not even what people see, is the way that I carry myself for loved ones is um, my level of thoughtfulness and how uh, I, I, am, I get a joy out of making people feel special and feel seen because my entire life I've felt seen and I don't know what it's like to not feel seen. And I'm, I'm grateful for that, but I understand that there's some people that go, man, my whole life I felt invisible. So I think what makes me rare is, is trying to give that to somebody else versus focusing on it for me. That's what I think. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. Um, yes. Your story is just so beautiful. And I know this is going to uplift and inspire a lot of women to just be like, you know, let me just stay true to myself. And do yeah. you, even if, you know, it takes five, 10 years to stick with it and yes. see results soon enough. So yeah, I thank you so much for talking to us today. We truly appreciate it. I yes. want to go ahead and let you... Um, you know, have the stage, let everyone know where they can follow you um, and what's next for um, Black Lady Sketch Show, where they can yeah. get at and let them know. Yeah, so a Black Lady Sketch Show currently streaming on, uh, streaming, screaming, what? Girl, <laughs> you gotta get it right before HBO sues you. It's a Black Lady Sketch Show <laughs> is streaming uh, on HBO and HBO Max and uh, hopefully for many seasons to come, I'm proud to be a part of it. And uh, I just, all my social media is under my name. I can't say I post much because I'm kind of focused on not being on my phone, but it is uh, Sky, S-K-Y-E Townsend. And uh, yeah, I'm just, like I said, right now my focus is legacy. And, you know, what you just said, I just wanted to close with that point is, you know, nothing in your journey is in vain. If you put in your 10,000 hours and you really cultivate your craft, you will see re results. You know, you will see change. And um and the best thing that you could do as an artist is study and, and learn why the people before you were great and to pull inspiration from them. You know, we don't know where we've been. We don't know where we're going. So right. I just, I always encourage any artist, do your homework, like do your homework, know the greats. Don't get arrogant enough to just want to be the best. You can, Yes, that's great. But focus on, you know, really elevating the culture because that's what it's about. Making smart art, making powerful art making beautiful, joyful art. That's what it's about. So that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we are going to be watching HBO Max just for you, girl. And we will be <laughs> tuning in for season three. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful day. This has been great. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Perfect. Bye.